Director General Wu Peng, good to have you on CGTN. Thank you. Africa has always been a diplomatic priority for China. President Xi Jinping has sent a congratulatory message to the African Union Summit, and Foreign Minister Qin Gang visited Africa just after assuming his new post. For 33 years, Chinese foreign ministers have made Africa the destination of their first overseas trip each year. So in your perspective, how would China tackle the global challenges and take the lead in international cooperation with Africa? In year 2013, President Xi Jinping put forth the principle of sincerity, real results, affinity, and good faith during his visit to Tanzania. This year marks the 10th anniversary. In recent years, joint projects of highways, electricity, communication, and ports span across Africa under the framework of FOCAC. African agriculture products like avocado and fresh pears have entered the Chinese market. China has remained Africa's largest trading partner for 13 years in a row. Today, China embarks on a new journey to build a modern socialist country. The African countries embraces the 60th anniversary of Organization of Africa Union. Africa is a big stage for international cooperation, not an arena for major power rivalry. We welcome the international community to expand support for Africa. It should be based on the real needs of Africa and also contribute to the peace and the development of Africa. Recently, however, some Western politicians and media have been playing up China's involvement in Africa as so-called a dead trap and neocolonialism. What's your response to those accusations? First of all, borrowing loan can not be avoided in the process of development for any country. For example, the United States government has adjusted the debt ceiling for almost 100 times. Its national debt has reached over 31 trillion US dollar. It's 30 times of Africans' total external debt stocks. Japan's debt ratio is about 260% of its GDP. No one can treat African differently. Secondly, China is not the main part responsible for Africans' debt issue. Thirdly, China focuses on supporting Africa in its development. Cooperation with China improves Africa's capacity of self-development. This contribution to relieving debt pressure from the root. Finally, I have noticed more and more objectives voices on China's role in the African debt issue. They appreciate China's commitment to providing debt relief for relevant countries and the greatest contribution among the G20 debt Service Suspension Initiative, DSSI. To support African people, China will try our best to push all the main creditors to sit down and discuss. I believe there will be always be more solutions than problems. It has been 10 years since President Xi Jinping first proposed the Belt and Road Initiative. Now we are entering into a new era of building a high-level China-Africa community with a shared future. So what are the main areas for cooperation in the next decade? China will continue to join efforts with Africa to pursue high-quality BRI cooperation in the next decade. China is willing to dock BRI and the construction of Chinese modernization with the African Union Agenda 2063. 
the African Continental Free Trade Area, precise and the development strategies of African countries. We will make efforts to keep sound momentum of the increasing trade volume and optimizing trade structure. The Chinese market will be open to more high-quality African goods. We will speed up the implementation of the outcomes of the latest FOCAC ministerial conference. We support Africa's efforts to narrowing its infrastructure gaps. Besides successful infrastructure cooperation and the BRI, we also push for new fields of cooperation, like agriculture, food security, green development, digital economy, and the blue economy. I'm convinced that the closer the Chinese and African people are, the more energetic the China-Africa relation will be.